dodge, dip, duck, dive and dolce. Life is too short to be drinking shitty beer. Welcome to another edition of Bands, Bikes and Booze Reviews. I've got a can of the Tiny Rebel Pastry Stout. Uh, I'll get onto what Pastry Stout is in a minute. Um, it wasn't cheap, it was nearly a five or a can. All right, So bear this in mind if you're thinking about buying one. Uh, the Tiny Rebel Brewery are based in um, Newport in South Wales. And they do some really good stuff. I've reviewed the beer and board, I think it's Bread and Board, which is uh, a beer they brewed for Iceland, which was really, really good and cheap as well. And um, it was brewed from stale bread and stuff like that. It was just mental what, how they brewed it, but really good stuff. This is another one from them, and I really like what they do. So whenever I see a tiny rebel beer, I always make a point of buying it. Um, this is their um, Dodge Dip Duck Dive and Dolce which I think is named after a film. I think it's a film and I, I really don't know. But it's um, it's a pastry stout. Now, if you don't know what a pastry stout is, it's a stout that is brewed in the normal way, but it's very sweet. And the name pastry is like an unofficial term for overly sweet. So the pastry that you're sort of thinking of is not like, you know, Greg's pastry. It's pastry as in like a Danish pastry it's that got that very high sugary type chocolatey content it is brewed with some um, chocolate malt uh, it uses special X malt which is like a German malt that hasn't been roasted for a long time but gives off a real intense chocolatey flavour and um, it's got um, oh, I can't remember what the hops are there is one is it Cascade? I can't remember. It's got one particular style of hops in there and um, it's got pills and malt in there as well. Uh, hang on, I'm just going to check because I don't want to tell you what's what's in there and it ain't. It's got Williamette hops, Williamette hops, uh, chocolate malt. There's also oats in this as well, which is quite common in stouts because obviously you get oatmeal stout and um, it's... It's to improve the flavour and the mouthfeel as well. So, what is it? It is a 330ml can. It is 11% in the volume. So it's like an imperial pastry stout, if you like. Pastry stout is a is an unofficial term. It's, I don't think it's recognised yet. It's just a name that's been given to these super strong, super sweet stouts that some brewers are doing. These are quite popular in America as well. So what we get? Wow. Dark chocolate. Coffee. Really good. Smells nice. Let's see what's in the can. Yeah, and that looks like a stout to me. That is a big beige head on that um, two finger head lots of carbonation on the nose what are we getting more of the same creaminess I imagine this is coming from the oats as well it's like melted melted chocolate smells nice let's dive in Mm. It's really nice. Okay, there's intense chocolate malt. Um, a lot of 
sweetness on that, almost like the. Apologies for this, I've had uh, the card fill up, I've had the battery run down. I don't think the camera wants me to review this pastry stout. But it's had time to cool down, so I'm probably going to get a bit more of the uh, flavour that's been in the fridge. So it's cooled down a little bit, so let me try once again. Yeah, it's, it's a typical imperial stout. It's got it's got that intense dark it's like melted dark chocolate that you're getting in your mouth and not a lot else. There's absolutely no hop there at all. You wouldn't you couldn't discern any, any hop content. And there's um there's just this huge amount of dark chocolate. There's just this huge amount of dark chocolate that you're gonna get when you first get it into your mouth and that lingers and it doesn't change much all the way down. But having said that, it is quite pleasant. It's like a bitter sweet dark chocolate. Bitterness on the front and then on the arse end, I imagine you're getting all the, the, the lactose and the sugary notes that come from this. Um, the mouthfeel is quite good as well. Really very drinkable and you know I'm making short work of this at the moment. As I say it's a 330ml can. It's 11% so it really is a... Um, they call it a pastry stout. To be honest, you know I've tasted imperial stouts that don't taste too dissimilar to this. Now the term pastry stout was sort of coined by um, some beer blocker, Alex Kidd, I think his name was, and he he used it disparagingly against these people that these craft brewers that brew imperial stouts as a basically just a, a piss take, saying that it's just they're just too sweet and they taste of oh, uh, too much sugar content, too much lactose content, etc. But the term has stuck, and now give it a few years, this will be an actual recognised term, you know, and. You know, I'm all for this. This is the beer evolution. You know, we're not in the dark ages of beer anymore like we were in the sort of 70s and 80s. This is like the time for experimentation and creation. And this is what, especially this brewery, Tiny Rebel. I really like what they do, and I like their ethos, and I like how I like how they get things done. And uh, yeah, so this is their. It's classed as a pastry stout. It's more of an imperial stout, to be honest. It is slightly more on the sweeter side. And as that warms up, I'm getting more of that. But there's also a bitterness there, like a coffee, slight coffee stroke dark chocolate bitterness, which I absolutely love. And I love these imperial stouts as well. And this is a really good one. But as I say, you know, always with these beers, this is not cheap, this is a 330ml can, and this was almost a fiver, it's £4.90. That's what it costs from the um, the uh, the actual brewery, Tiny Rebel. I don't know how much I bought this for. I probably couldn't even tell you my name on the day I bought this. <laughs> I was that out of it. But um, it's not bad, so what would I give it out of 10? Well, um, it's very nice, it goes down very nice. Um, it's got everything you would expect from an imperial stout with a little bit of sweetness on top of it. There's, it reminds me of the, the breakfast stout from Siren. It's got that super drinkability to it. But the high ABV, you've got to be really careful with this because it's 11%. And you know, if you drank a pint of this, you know, it wouldn't take long before you'd be feeling the effects of it. Um, what would I give it? It's a really good example. It is a really, really good example. What sort of doesn't want, wouldn't want me to give this a 10 out of 10 is the price. It's nearly a fiver a can. Um, I don't know how many people would be willing to pay a fiver for a can of this. It's good, I would say. Get one, just so you can savour the flavour, but you, you wouldn't have a night out on this stuff 
it's very rich as well you know after about three or four you'd be thinking Christ you know just give me some give me some lager give me some Heineken <laughs> but uh, it's not bad I will give it that it's not a bad beer 8 out of 10 and I'd recommend it because I love everything Tiny Rebel do and I've yet to well I've tried two beers and both of them have been really good so yeah 8 out of 10 and I'd recommend it if you can afford it and remember beer is working class champagne